Hey everyone, it's Riley playing from Team Ariana on this season of The Voice, and I'm here hanging out with Rob at Front Row Live. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> Riley, I'm super, super, super excited about you. Uh, you are one of my top favorites for this season. Uh, oh, your, really? your voice, your performance, everything about you just kind of tells, like, I'm just so excited for you. Let's just leave it at that. Thank <laughs> but, you so much. <laughs> but I want to jump in and talk about your blind audition performance, just because the song you chose, Anyone by Demi Lovato, you don't sing it unless you feel it and you definitely did that you you gave us this emotion i felt your pain during the performance so i'm curious what made you choose this song and also how do you feel this song kind of saved you thank you so much first of all for all the kind words that was really sweet and um yeah thank you so much um this song it it really, I, it resonates with me tons because um, I started struggling with depression and anxiety at around the age of 12 years old. And um, around that time, weirdly enough, actually, I was seeing how Demi was so open about their struggles with mental health. And I decided at that time, I mean, I knew I wanted to do music with my life. So I was like, when I have my moment or I have a platform to do this, what Demi was doing, um, and just be open and an advocate about mental health or for it mental health. Um, I want to do it. And I think that that is what makes this moment really special for me personally, is that I sort of had that full circle kind of thing where I got to sing a Demi song about the exact thing that they inspired me to do. And um, it was just really special. And you are right. It was something that really um, I could pour all of my emotions into because of how seriously connected I am to the words. And, um, you know, when you're struggling with mental health, sometimes no matter what, it feels like nobody's listening and you just feel so utterly alone. And I have felt that more times than I can count, um, since the beginning of my journey with my mental health. So it was just a really special moment to get to tell that story on stage in front of two of the people that helped me become the vocalist I am now and are now helping me become even better, which is really cool. As far as being able to perform this song, you get 90 seconds to, to showcase your vocals and your best performance. So how did you go about as far as picking which parts of the song you were going to perform? And then on top of that, how were you able to kind of show off your vocal techniques without doing too much too soon? Yeah, that is so important. I think with this song specifically, I wanted to have I wanted to pick and choose my moments. I wanted it to be emotionally charged from the get-go because it is just a song that requires that. But I also wanted to keep the integrity of the song intact. I didn't want to do too much or, you know, I wanted it to be the emotion and the story at the forefront. And I think that that really informed my vocal decisions because I didn't want to just add riffs where I could just do a riff. I wanted it to be strategic and I wanted it to add to the story and add to the emotion that I was um, letting out, I guess is the right word. And I, I think that was something that was really crucial to the process when I was figuring out where I wanted to have my moments and to also show more of my vocal ability on top of my emotional vulnerability, if that makes sense. And um, yeah, so it was just a lot of like, Oh, I did in that version. I think that's a little too much for me to go there in that exact spot. I think maybe we should save it for the end or toward the end and stuff like that. It was just a lot of like picking and choosing and like moving or erasing. <laughs> and um, I think that that was part of what made, well, helped. It helped my story resonate with people because it wasn't a show a vocal showcase it was more so an emotional showcase that was backed up by the vocals and I think that is something that I'm really proud of honing in in that moment too how did you go about as far as the rehearsals because being so vulner vulnerable like you were with this song and kind of experiencing this moment with these these coaches that you know we grew up idolizing 
And then you're giving us all of these runs and vibratos throughout this performance, but you're still controlled. Like you're not, your voice is controlled the entire way. So how are you able to do that? And, you know, did you feel like that was a challenge to get it down uh, before we got to hear what we hear on this performance? Yes, definitely. I think that, um, like I said, the rehearsal process by myself specifically was just a lot of like critiquing myself and finding the right spots to add those vocal elements because I feel like if you just do runs in the middle of the verse, like it just, just excess runs. I mean, um, it just takes away from the story you're telling with this specific song. And that can be the case with tons of music. If you're just doing acrobats to do acrobats, you know, acrobatics, I guess. If you're just doing acrobatics to do acrobatics, it, I think it shows sometimes. And I, that was so important to me when I was figuring out how I wanted to do this because the story I wanted, I wanted the story to be at the forefront. And um, in rehearsals, it definitely is such an emotionally charged song that like it takes a lot out of you sometimes to repetitively sing a song that is a that resonates so deeply within me and also that I know so many other people need to hear and so I always gave it my all and when you're giving your all for a performance that is so personal it can be um very intense but I think that putting my all in every performance leading up well rehearsal leading up to the performance is part of what made it so real on the stage in that moment because I had built up this like emotional story and then that time that one performance was like the build-up that I had been creating the entire time up until that point and I think I don't know it, it was very emotionally charged and I feel very fortunate to have gotten to share such a story on such an incredible stage in front of incredible people and it was just incredible <laughs> build up is definitely the right word to use when it comes to your runs because in the beginning when you said when you sang nobody's listening that run really like i was blown away by it and then you close out the song with an even more incredible run uh, what was that feeling like for you once you kind of finalized your performance oh my gosh it was like it was weirdly a release, if that makes sense. Like, I mean, I had been anticipating a moment like this for so long. I've auditioned for so many shows and just knowing how deeply I felt the lyrics of this song and being able to go on that stage and perform it after working so hard to get it as pristine as I could for how emotional it was. Um, it just felt like a release to do that one last little thing and to see I had two chair turns. It was just like, it was magical despite how, um, I guess sad could be the word for the song. I, um, despite how sad the song may sound, it also was more so like a, this is what I've been experiencing, but look at what I can do with what I have been dealing with, you know? And I think that was something that made it just such a magical moment and it definitely was like I don't know like that moment when you see something beautiful and you just go <sighs> like it just felt like that you know if that makes sense it's such a weird description but it really was just so beautiful how different was it singing this song for you as opposed to your single come down and did you feel that that was uh, did you feel like you were stepping into a new world when it comes to genres and vocalizations or do you feel like it's something along the ranges of what you create on your own? Um, it definitely, the song itself is definitely in my vocal wheelhouse and Demi creates incredible music that I have loved for so long. And they definitely inspired me with the rock elements that they had earlier in their career. And um, so that was really cool in itself. But I personally, I love to add so many different elements of different genres and to just mix it all up all the time so I am constantly just doing a bunch of different things and just throwing them into a pot and mixing it up and hoping that people like it because I I strive to be labelless and to just be me rather than some somebody that people can just like toss into that box or toss into that one I like to I don't know mix it up and um so it was definitely 
a vocal challenge in itself because of the nature of the song, but then um, doing something so vulnerable for my first step, I don't know, my first step out into the music industry in a large sense, it was definitely, um, I don't know, it was special. And I think that because of how I don't confine myself to a certain thing, it makes it so I can cross multiple borders. And I think that um, was something that was really cool about my blind was that I got to do what people may not have necessarily expected from me. And um, yeah. <laughs> the fact that you said like you, you don't, you want to be labelless, um, you know, and going back to your song, come down, uh, how, much of a challenge did you find kind of picking and choose? Like, why did you choose Antonio Hanna to be your producer for this song when you're trying to, uh, you're not trying to be in one specific lane? Yeah, I think it was that whole process of creating that song was something that is so dear to my heart because I had um, a very special friend on with me who helped get Antonio on. And they both have really awesome roots in like alternative and indie specifically where Hannah's, um, Mr. Hannah is concerned. Um, I, so that was something that was really important to me because I did want to go in the grungy vein while also keeping what I love about pop vocals and soul vocals in there. And I, I think I went in there with a pretty clear vision. I actually created a demo where I had like the breathing sounds in it and like the grungy guitars. And I just went in and I was like, make this sound better. <laughs> and then we did. And they were incredible. It was so fun. I love Stuart, who was on the guitars and Antonio did just a great job. It's so crispy and it was even better than I imagined. Well, congratulations with your success on The Voice. Now to close us off, what can your newfound fans look forward to next from you? Oh my goodness, gosh. I I just, every time I get a question about like what's next, I just say, keep an eye out for everything because I want <laughs> to do as much as I can and um, just constantly be doing and creating. So my next move, I think, after The Voice um, will definitely be doing some sort of EP or something like that and just getting out and performing and doing other things that I love like makeup and dance and production and stuff like that. So just keep your eyes peeled for me doing just maybe things you wouldn't even expect. I don't know. <laughs> I just, I want to do as much as possible and I am just so grateful to have people along for the ride. Amazing. Well, congratulations once again. I look forward to thank hearing you. and seeing more of you. And uh, thank you for taking the time to do this. Thank you so much, Rob. I had I had so much fun. I, I keep tripping over my words because it's just like, it's such an indescribable feeling and moment and experience that like, just picking the right words is always so difficult because <laughs> of just how incredible and memorable this whole thing has been. So I appreciate you bearing with me as I stumble. Absolutely. Abs <laughs> I mean, you're obviously excited. So there's, I mean, yes. there's no blame there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate being here. Thank you so much.